Hey. And in recent light of the fact that we no longer really have DVD leaks, um, and all the, you know, we don't know three chapters ahead anymore, I, uh, I wanted to make a concept for The Predator. I, I've not seen all the Predator movies, admittedly, but I have seen the first one a couple times, and, I mean, I think a Predator in DVD would just be so cool. So I made a chapter concept for him. And, hey, if you like this chapter concept, you know, give me a like, hit me up with a subscribe, and, uh, you know, maybe leave a comment and say, hey, that was pretty cool, and maybe suggest a different chapter concept that I could do. Especially if it's something that I've seen. <laughs> but if not, then I, I'd be willing to research the source material, because I, I do love making these concepts, and I have a lot of them just in my head that I'd like to put in a video form. All right, and of course, starting off, we have the Predator himself. So the Predator, for his base attributes, I just wanted to keep them simple. He's just going to be, you know, a taller kind of killer. Uh, basic terror radius, basic movement speed, just, you know, 32 meters, 4.6. And for his power, I wanted him to have a passive that is um, similar to how the obsession works, but um, it's separate from it, and it's a bounty target, and it would be a, a called Yatcha Bounty, and this bounty would randomly assign at the beginning of the game, and chasing this bounty will give you a small 3% haste effect during the chase, and will inflict the target with paranoia, which is a new status effect that I made for this chapter concept, and it's essentially just like Think of Face the Darkness, where they just kind of scream intermittently. Um, that's pretty much what Paranoia is. And then whenever you hook that bounty, um, it'll create a new bounty out of the other three survivors. Like, it'll randomly choose between the three survivors. And then the new bounty, who it selects, will scream, and you'll grant you a token to his next part of his power, Natural Predator, and you'll become cloaked for 30 seconds. Now, while you're cloaked, um, it just, you know, of course, you were undetectable, uh, no red stain, and you you ha you can attack out of cloak, but it has a short charge up. It is a very short, like, half second charge up. That um, and a half second charge up. Sorry, I was thinking of a another ability that will come to later down the line. It is a zero point three second charge up, and then you can come out with a basic attack. Alright, Natural Predator, the actual power. You know, This, I wanted to gain tokens, and this is one of the few, if the only killer, I think the only killer, that gains tokens in their actual power. So I wanted him to start, of course, at zero, and then once he hits four tokens, as in, you know, four hooks, he'll start gaining, you know, these effects, and so I, I determined that he would get an effect at four, five, six, seven, and eight tokens, and these would all benefit him like pretty greatly and kind of unlock his abilities as he goes, um, and make him stronger against said bounty. Okay, four tokens the first time you get an ability gives him the ability to cloak for 30 seconds after every hook after the duration of the normal undetectable running out, and you can control it with the power button. And while cloaked, all survivors are highlighted in thermal vision. And you can hit them in cloak, of course, by holding the attack button like I mentioned before. Um, but this would kind of allow him to also have the cloak as, like, control it after every, um... I, I meant to say after every bounty hook, so this kind of gives him the ability to uh, roam around uh, undetectable, like, whenever he wants. So he has kind of like that meter instead of just the 30 seconds after and then just, you know, it's gone. So now he has an undetectable meter that he can use. All right. And five tokens grants a pretty gnarly ability, and I actually really like this one. Um, it grants the ability to use your arm cannon against your bounty once per every token. Like, so for this token, you get one, one use, and then for every future one, you get one use. And you can use it whenever you're 24 or more meters away, and it has a lock-on time of like a half second. You know, if they break line of sight, it stops. Um, 
and it gives the survivor a 10% hindered effect for five seconds. Now, this values could be shifted, you know, all those numbers, but the basis of this is that I wanted to give them a hindered, with like a shock effect around them after they get shot by the cannon. And, of course, um, Predator will be slowed down a little bit, and he would have, you know, 4.4 movement speed while charging this. But this cannon would kind of help to close the distance against your bounties. And, um, you know, because after you hook, they'll scream, and then you kind of see them in the distance, so you can kind of close your, close the uh, the distance between you and them. Um, also, I say 24 or more meters. There'd definitely be a limit. There'd definitely probably be a max range of, like, 40 meters. Uh, because otherwise that would be, you know, insane. Uh, not not because it would be, like, insanely busted or anything, but, it, I mean, as a survivor, getting hit from cross map from an arm cannon would be very strange. Not like it would be good for the killer, but it would be, you know, a bit wild. Okay. At six tokens, um, I wanted to have a bit of a coup de gras ability, and so he would have his normal lunch, which I would imagine would be with his claws. But then, the longer, after you hold it, like, so the normal duration of a lunge, um, you could do normally to save these tokens. Or you could hold it, and after your lunge would normally run out, he would um, he would use his wrist blade. Like he would unsheath his wrist blade and continue forward for a 50% longer lunge. And for every token other than this token, you would uh or you would gain one. And so like when you hit seven, eight, and so forth, you would gain one but you get two from this token. And now, after you hook somebody and the bounty shifts, your uh, new bounty will be incapacitated for 20 seconds. All right, and then at seven tokens, it's a really simple effect. Uh, your bounty just now affects the entire team. So now when you hook somebody, or, or now when you hook anybody, uh, everyone will scream, and you will have a, a boost against everybody. Everybody will be afflicted with paranoia uh, while chasing them. And uh, and you can use the arm cannon against everybody. All right, eight tokens. Uh, eight tokens are very simple. Um, it, of course, a really strong effect because eight tokens, you know, eight hooks is, you know, that's, the game is almost over at that point. But uh, your cloak just has infinite duration and no decloak time, so you can immediately attack uh, with your basic attack just as normal, just like you would as if you weren't cloaked. And now you can see uh, bounties through walls while cloaked, um, while they're injured, and it, like th with the thermal effect through walls. And I didn't necessarily have like a whole thing read out for his add-ons, but I did make his iridescent add-ons because I feel like those are the most important, anyways. And those are the ones I actually had ideas for. So I made the first iridescent add-on, the iridescent Yatja Spear, make it so that you no longer gain benefits until you hit eight tokens, but then when you hit eight tokens, everyone will become exposed for the remainder of the trial, and you'll have a 100% bigger tear radius. So now this is kind of like a very high-risk reward, where if you don't get those eight tokens and everybody gets out before you can get eight tokens, you just kind of lose. But if you do get those eight tokens, you can then have everyone exposed for the remainder of the trial, and you can have you can have a bigger terror radius that could combo well with like um, unnerving presence and chorophobia and everything like that. So it, it's kind of like a a nice little side benefit that you can run, and it, it's a really risky playstyle, but it basically you know makes you really strong. Once you hit eight tokens. I also forgot to add that hitting eight tokens um, will still give you the infinite cloak. And like the decloak time and all that. It'll still give you all that on top of this effect. Alright, Iridescent Gorilla Headband. And for this, you stay invisible the entire trial and no longer gain haste from chasing bounties. And you no longer gain tokens for natural predator at all past four but after hooking a bounty four times you will gain a 10 percent permanent haste effect and this is just like since uh attacking in general is is not that slow in cloak it kind of just makes you a alternate you know predator that's always cloaked 
and can attack out of his cloak, but now you're faster, and... Okay, let me rephrase that. For the Gorilla Headband, I said that it would no longer gain tokens past four. It would gain, gain tokens past four, but they would have no effect, unless you ran it with the other Iridescent, and then the other Iridescent kind of has priority on it, so you would still stay invisible for the entire trial, and but the other Iridescent would give you uh, the Everyone Exposed effect and the 100% Bigger Terror Radius, which doesn't really matter because you'll stay cloaked, um, when you hit eight tokens. So it, it's kind of a strange combo, but it's one that, that kind of works together still, uh, but also still works on their own. So you don't necessarily have to, you know, run them together or anything. Now we're on to the Predator's Perks. And I actually had a really fun time making these. Um, I, I think the the first one here especially is very, uh, very interesting. It's something that hasn't really been explored too much when it comes to perks. And our first one up is Tales of the Hunter. And Tales of the Hunter is a perk that when you attack the survivor... Um, survivors, or any one of the survivors with a basic attack for the first time, um, they are afflicted with paranoia and exposed for 100 seconds. And then any subsequent survivor who gets within 60 meters of them will share this effect for 60 seconds and extend this main survivor's effect by 10 seconds. So this, this whole thing basically makes it so once you hit somebody, people kind of have to stay away from that survivor. And if they get within the range of that survivor, they kind of start to spread this exposed effect, um, as well as having the paranoia. So they kind of tell you exactly where they are while also being exposed. And not only that, uh, the more people it spreads to, the original survivor is going to have to keep it for longer. So they, they kind of have to take that risk of always being um, exposed so they can't really heal and always having paranoia. So the killer pretty much always knows where they are. Uh, for like a maximum of like 130 seconds. So it's something that the original survivor has to be really careful about and the team has to mind that they need to kind of stay away from that survivor because they they will all spread this effect. All right, next up. Uh I just wanted to do so like with these perk ideas, I wanted to do two alternate kind of perks. Uh, for example, this one that's coming up is essentially like a uh, Scourge Hook Overcharge, is what I would say. And so this is Scourge Hook, a test of skill. And after hooking on a Scourge Hook, every generator is currently being worked on will receive a difficult skill check. If the survivor succeeds, it, it gets no progression, of course. But if they fail, it'll apply a 8% regression on top of what it normally already removes. Um, also, on top of this, it will have a passive, which I know passives are not a normal thing for Scourge Hooks. It doesn't really make sense, you might think, but I made it have a passive that anyone who fails a skill check will have their aura reveal for six seconds and be oblivious for, you know, the normal tiered effect, but at purple, 45 seconds. And this kind of gives you like a nice passive effect along with that because this actual scar trick effect, while while being you know like it definitely will have some effect, but it's not as strong as like a pain res. Um, and obviously it has bad uh, synergy with pain res because pain res will make them scream, which will get them off the gen, and so they won't even receive a skill check. So, uh, running this with something like overcharge would not be bad. Like being able to kick a generator and make them get that skill check, and then if they fail, you can kind of see them and know that you can sneak up on them because you're oblivious. Um, but running running it to kind of make an impossible skill check build would also be good, along with overcharge and then, like, unnerving presence and stuff. So I wanted this perk to be really good for those skill check builds and, and kind of give you a benefit to more the more skill checks the survivors fail. All right. Hex Assertive Domain, and this one, like I said before, I was kind of going with alternative perks. This one is a more passive but risky Shattered Hope in my in this concept. All right. Anytime a survivor blesses a totem like this hex, and 
This hex will destroy the totem over a period of 30 seconds. And as soon as the hex is lit, it'll reveal itself for four seconds. So it, it will um it will show itself to the survivors, and they kind of have a very limited amount of time. Uh with normal uh with normal cleansing times, it would be, you know, uh 16 seconds to get to the totem and then 14 seconds, of course, to cleanse it. Otherwise, uh, the boon will be destroyed and the hex will unlight itself until another boon is deployed. Also, uh, I I wanted to add, just like Ruin, um, when you have this up, or like you have this perk um, active, like when a boon first gets deployed, uh, you cannot snuff out boons. It's just like Ruin with kicking generators. You cannot snuff out boons while it is active. And of course, just like any other hex, if it's cleansed, it's its effects removed for the rest of the trial. But I think Assertive Domain would be really good in situations where you're already in a chase, and maybe the survivors don't don't pay attention or can't like necessarily reach uh, the totem. Like You could try and like guard it and everything, and then it will remove that blessed uh, totem and kind of just save you time and possibly get you hits as well. Uh, so it's a bit more passive and... You know, while you still have to waste that time to guard that totem for 30 seconds, um, it, it's kind of, that's where the risk goes, because sometimes you could get that passively, and the survivors don't make it in time, or you could guard it, and then that just guarantees that wherever the boon is, especially if you don't know where it is, it's already destroyed. Alright, and for this concept, I wanted to kind of base it off the first Predator movie, so I made the survivor of this chapter concept, Dutch from the first movie, obviously Arnold Schwarzenegger's character. Very simple choice because, you know, he's iconic. Um, so I have him with his own three unique perks. And starting off, we have Expert CQB. And this is an exhaustion perk, a very unique exhaustion perk, in that if a swing, like a basic attack or special attack near misses you, you gain 130% sprint speed and 15% vault speed for four seconds. And then just like any other exhaustion perk, you become exhausted for 40 seconds. This perk, I kind of want to make something that's, you know, popular but very risky uh, for, like, for people who like the Jude Killers. Uh, because the vault speed is something very unique to just this perk. And, of course, it's not as fast as Sprint Burst. But you have another full second of duration. So, baiting the swings from the Killers, actually, like, with this perk, could give you a lot of distance and reset the chase, um fully especially with a really good window around you all right his second perk um this one i wanted to make kind of like a uh one man undetectable counter in a way and this actually introduces uh my second new status effect in silence and we'll talk about that later um, but anytime a killer has the undetectable status effect, uh, you have a sound cue that happens when they get within 16 meters of you, and it also, the perk icon flashes red. And this will give you the silent status effect, making your breathing and footstep noises completely silent for 10 seconds. And this effect would have a cooldown of 20 seconds, so they can just keep moving in and out of that 16 meter radius, or 16 meter radius and keep giving you this silence effect. It, you know, because then it would just, like, kind of stack over and over, or just kind of hold over and over. So I wanted it to kind of have a cooldown after this full 10 seconds so that you couldn't keep getting this ability so you could, like, stealth infinitely. Uh, during this time, I also wanted to make the unique effect with silence that you cannot be stalked and you cannot have any highlighting effects. Uh, work on you. So you are kind of immune to the effects that require them to uh, to look at you. In the same way, you would also be immune to aura effects, but you would be immune to the to the uh, stock abilities because you would be, you know, the silence, the effect essentially just makes you invisible. Uh, which I know is similar just to distortion effect, but I, I think silence, you know, has its separate things because it doesn't give you, like, completely... Like, you'll still have scratch marks, and if you're injured, you'll still have blood. Um, but you will have no breathing or footstep noises at all. 
his last perk, no one is expendable. I wanted to make him. Um, I wanted to make it very altruistic because I think that really fits him. And I decided to make it about this exposed status effect because that effect is honestly becoming more and more common as we get newer killers. So I made it so when someone is on your team is revealed with the uh, exposed status effect, their aura is revealed to you um, for the duration of the effect. And if you get within eight meters of them, you can use the, um, the active ability button. Well, of course, this is while healthy, so that it doesn't overlap with dead hard. Um, you can use the active ability button to remove their exposed status effect and give them 10 seconds of endurance. Now, this would also give you yourself broken for the remainder of the exposed status effect. So it's essentially taking the exposed status effect for them. Now, of course, I didn't make it exactly that because then you could chain this perk and that would kind of give a really strange like a really strange uh, combination with itself so uh it it does give broken to yourself for the remainder of the effect and but in turn the person who you you know took it from will have endurance and they'll be immune to receiving the exposed to effect again for 30 seconds so for example that's if, if it was like noed for example that kind of like stays up permanently or like devour hope um, they would still not be able to get the exposed from Devour Hope or Noed for 30 seconds, so they would actually be just normal, like they just wouldn't have the effect for 30 seconds, but then as soon as the 30 seconds is up, they'll just get the effect back. But I, I think that this perk could be really clutch in situations like Noed, um, where they run up to a survivor and, you know, they take their exposed from them and then they help them escape. and Or like situations when it comes to um, like Ghostface and Myers... When they're about to get, like, uh, a couple downs, maybe you save a survivor right as they mess up on a vault or something. Um, I think it's just really cool to to have that kind of special effect for for Dutch in that he can save his teammates by, uh, you know, making himself broken, similar to, like, an effect, like, for the people. All right, that was my Predator concept. And if you're curious about knowing, like, what the map would be, not that it really kind of matters... Um, it would definitely, in my opinion, be the Predator's planet from Predators, uh, because I think that's uh, most fitting for Predator to have his kind of homeland be there, or just the original like Guatemalan jungle from the first movie. That, that would also make a lot of sense. I definitely wanted to have that jungle theme, though, as it would really fit with, you know, Predator, and it would be a completely new look for the game in general. But yeah, that's my chapter concept. On the screen now is uh, a couple of videos you could watch, uh, and in the middle, you could subscribe. Uh, I, I really recommend watching these two videos. These are some good ones. See you in the next one.